What's up everybody? I'm Michael Chris, three years running bestseller at Shine On. Now I'm the CMO of Shine On. I wanted to thank you so much for checking out our YouTube video. And if you like this kind of content, I want you to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I hope you enjoy the video. Am I muted? Okay, no. you were. I was you muted were. the whole time. What's up everybody? How are we doing? Great. 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 Doing good. good. Good to hear. Today we got a super fun coffee with Michael. Uh, we've got some newcomers here that maybe people haven't seen before. We'll introduce everybody in just a minute. This is the best time of the week every week, guaranteed this week anyways. So welcome. You know how we like to kick things off here? We like to start off with a toast and then we're going to get into today's business. This is an ultimate top seller panel. We've never done one of these before, so hopefully this works out pretty well. Everybody's excited for it. Everybody got your drinks handy? Yes. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Raise up your glasses, mugs, bottles, and flasks, and join me now for the Digital Marketer's Toast. Here's to more conversions, more cash, cheap CPMs, and more CAX, higher CTRs, much higher CVRs to enable ad accounts and big bank accounts, upsells, downsells, and cross-sells, to winning products and repeat sales, and to the thing that everybody knows, the riches are in the niches, but also your ego flows. Cheers, everybody. Drink. Cheers. Cheers. Ah, that is the way to do it right there. All right. Everybody feel that? I feel like every time we do one of those... It might just be me, but I feel like my entire day gets better. I feel like the my I get more sharp. My mental acuity hones in. Let me get our slides up. There we go. All right, today, top seller panel. I think between uh, everybody listening here, I think it's like 50, 75,000 units, something like that. I was trying to do the math real quick before the call, and I was struggling to do it, but it's a lot of freaking units up here on the screen. So this is gonna be a fun one. I'm super excited about it. Super excited to see where this goes. Like I said, we've never done one of these before, so it'll be fun. All right, a quick announcement. Page speed improvement. So the dev team has been crawling through every single line of code on our pages, and they found uh, some stuff that they were able to clean up, and it improved the page speeds by one to three seconds on average. Now, I know that's kind of a, a wide spread there, but we're seeing around one page, uh, one second on the app and up to three seconds on the platform. So if you've had any issues with page speed lately, that should be resolved as of earlier this week. So you should see conversions increase and hopefully sales. So we're super stoked about that. That's something we've been trying to chase down now for a few months. Looks like we lost, we had a woman down. Uh, Anna, let's get you back up here. Where are we at? Hang on, I'm trying to find my cursor. There she is, she's back. Can you hear us, Anna? Anna, am I muted again? Can anybody else hear me? I can hear you. I think Anna is muted. Okay, that's it. Anna is muted. We're getting uh, sound is bad. There's a bit of an echo. Hey, is this better? Yeah. Uh, since on. Anna what dropped. What's the happening camera? here? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> we we can hear you now. Okay. Can anybody else hear me? Uh oh. I can hear you. I think Anna is muted. Okay. Okay. Hey, let's try something. If uh, everybody mute if you're not talking. I think most everybody is. Hold on. One second. I think something's happening with my speakers. We can hear you now. Uh oh. Uh oh. I can't hear anything. Hold on one second. <laughs> I'll put this on mute. Hold on. Stand by, everybody. Okay, I think we're I think we're back now. Hey, so uh, just bear with us, folks. Never had this many people on the coffee with Michael before, so we'll get this sorted out. So, anyways, page speed has improved. So. Uh, super excited about that. Like I said, this should have a direct impact 
on conversions and sales because your customer experience should have just got better. So all the buyers, right, that visit your product pages, um, they should have a much better experience because of that. So anyway, go check that out. Also, when I was super stoked about this, we have new analytics pages. If you haven't had a chance to get into the platform and poke around at the analytics pages, you're missing out. So we have macro level analytics, they're beautiful. Um, we keep track of a bunch of additional data that we haven't done before. Your page views, add to carts, initiate checkouts, purchases. We're calculating conversion rates for you on the fly for just your data. You have the ability to add annotations now. So if you go in and make some macro level change to your products, like maybe you make a wholesale pricing change or you add warranty to everything, or maybe you just make a change on a specific product, you can now add annotations to just those pages and it'll actually keep track of that here in your chart. So you can see how your changes actually impacted sales, conversions, things like that. The analytics are amazing. I've never seen another platform with analytics quite like this. This is a huge level up in my opinion. Another thing that's super cool is you now have UTM tracking. So at the product level, so if you navigate to one of your products, you click the view analytics button up at the top, you have UTM tracking now inside of the product pages. This means you'll have the ability to go into your Facebook campaigns or Snapchat or Google or wherever you're at doing your advertising. You can add unique UTM parameters to your URLs and we'll actually listen for that on the product page and show you which of the UTM parameters are performing the best. This is gonna help you optimize your ads with more efficiency, especially with iOS 14 and kind of the, the haze that's putting around everybody's data. This is gonna be a huge improvement. So if you haven't had a chance to go check out the new analytics, you really need to, it's, it's freaking amazing. So go check that out. All right, just checking in the comments here. Not seeing any other complaints about the sound. So I think we got the sound cracked. So awesome. Okay, let's get to some seller testimonials and then we'll get into the fun stuff with all uh, of our panelists here. All right, testimonials. First two purchases today from Autumn Group. Autumn, welcome to the community. Congratulations. Way to be. Love to see it. Good work. We got one from Ashwini here. One unit sold, $38 in profit. Last post, uh, late post. First sale a few days back. Whoop, whoop. Congratulations. That's amazing. Said the coffee episodes helped a lot. There's a reason you're tuning into these. It's because it, everybody that watches these, statistically, their sales just get better. It's amazing. It's, 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 a, it's a phenomenon. Um, anyways, congratulations, Ashwini. That's fantastic. And then Annette Wood, first Etsy sale right here. First Etsy sale, probably taken after Anna or Luna. So congratulations. Congratulations, Annette. Way to be. Let's give every give all these people a little round of applause. Get those get those applause emojis going in the chat. Those are always fun. So congratulations, all three of you have got some swag coming your way. Somebody from my team is going to reach out. Uh, we've got some t-shirts. We're actually designing some new t-shirts, so that's going to be really fun. And uh, we'll get something mailed out to you soon. So keep your eye out for an IM from somebody from my team, and we'll get you taken care of on those. All right, let's talk about our panelists today. So. We have four people up here. They're all top sellers. They've all done a fantastic job with Shine On. We have a ton to learn from all of these people, myself included. So I'm super excited to have, uh, to be doing this today. Um, I did, look, we prepared some very basic intro slides here, but I think what I'm gonna try to do, uh, I'm gonna try to give the floor to each of our panelists for a few seconds here to kind of intro yourself a little bit. So I didn't tell anybody we were doing this beforehand. Um, so I think you, I think you'll be able to handle it though. Just five, 10 seconds. Let us know who you are. Uh, it'll help out. So Anna, everybody knows Anna at this point, sold 5,000 units on Etsy and Amazon. Congrats, Anna. Anna, if you want to unmute yourself just, uh, quickly, you know, let us know how you got into shine on, how you got into e-commerce. Give us, give us the real quick 30 second version of, uh, who you are for anybody that doesn't know. Okay. Awesome. Hi, I am Anna Beck. Uh, I've been doing pod for probably about four years now, selling POD products. And I sell on Etsy and Amazon and a little bit on eBay as well. And I found Shine On in January because I was looking for a new product that uh, I wanted something a little bit more positive or something that I was excited about. And I came across Shine On and I 
saw the product, I saw what I could do with it, and I immediately jumped in. And you'll see here that I had sold 5,000 units, and that was from a huge Mother's Day run. And so I am so excited to talk about Etsy. Um, that's where I tell people to start because I believe that's the lowest hanging fruit that you can start with selling Shine On products. So I'm so happy to be here. Thanks, Michael. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Next, we have Jesse Atkinson, 12,000 units on Facebook. So we got a Facebook ads guru in the house. What's up, Jesse? Can you give us a 30 second version, who you are for people who don't know? Absolutely. Yeah. So I've been doing Shine On for about a year. I, uh, I started with drop shipping six or seven years ago. When the pandemic hit, I was looking for something that shipped from the US because shipping was a nightmare from China. Um, and China was the solution. I gave it a couple shots. It, at first it didn't work out. And then I just kept trying new designs and I finally hit a winner. Um, and I just kind of scaled it to the moon. So, you know, that, that's, that's basically my, my main focus is Facebook ads. Um, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Way to be, man. Looking forward to talking about uh, some scaling tips here. Um, the funny thing about Facebook, any Facebook marketer knows this, if you get a winner, your goal is to scale it before you get ripped off. <laughs> so it's like, it's like freaking pedal to the metal. It's like a bank robbery, right? <laughs> it's like one of those things. You jump out to the getaway car and you floor it. That's the whole scaling business in Facebook. So excited to get into that with you. Luna Vega sold 4,000 units on Etsy. What's up, Luna? Give us 30 okay. seconds for anybody who doesn't know you. What would you say? I didn't hear that. Give us the 30 second version oh. of who Luna is for anybody that doesn't know. Yeah, so I've actually been in the industry for quite a while. Like I've been a digital marketer for 10 plus years. And I st started doing print on demand back in 2017. I actually met Eric in Barcelona back in, I think it was 2019. And he told me about Shine On because I was kind of frustrated with selling t-shirts and the profit margins. So I actually started Shine On, um, well, it's, it's been a year. I was doing Facebook advertising. And then I switched to Etsy uh, in October and it's been great. So yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing uh, everything that I've learned. And also I've been telling everyone, uh, I've been really active on TikTok and telling everyone it's like so easy to get sales uh, by using sort of like the shine on and Etsy model. So looking forward to share what I've learned along the way. Oh, that's super cool. That'll be fun to talk about here in a little bit. You did some, you did some damage uh, on the Facebook side of the house too, didn't you? Didn't you have a winner? Yeah, I had, well, Father's when I first started Day? on Father's Day, I had a winner that did really well. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah, and then I switched to Etsy. Yeah, that's awesome. And then um, also, aren't you speaking at a conference soon, like Affiliate World or something like that? I am. I'm speaking at Affiliate East, uh, which is in New York, in a couple of weeks, like July 17th. So looking yeah. forward to that as well. <laughs> awesome. Well, I expect uh, an education here in a little bit when we get into it. Thanks, Luna. All right. And then Tiffany, everybody knows Tiffany. Tiffany's been on two or three times now. Tiffany, welcome back. Over 10,000 units on Facebook. Hit a big winner. I think I think you've hit winners for all three of the last holidays, Valentine's Day, uh, Mother's Day, and Father's Day. So congratulations. Great consistency there. Um, usually, if you're in this space, you're a print-on-demand marketer, especially if you're a platform seller and you don't have your own store, your goal is to hit one big winner every single holiday. And you're knocking it out of the park so far this year. So congratulations. Tiffany, can you give us uh, kind of the 30-second version of who you are, how you found Shine On, and that kind of thing? Uh, thank, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me back. And it's great to be on this panel with all the Titans. Um, I'm actually the probably the newest newbie among the four of us. I started about last July on um, just print on demand um, t-shirts and I didn't understand t-shirts because I don't wear them. And I originally was in the SCUP group. They have an incubator program where um, I heard about Shine On and then eventually in November when I gave up the t-shirt side of the business and then um, was talked into by Mario uh, uh, into Shine On and all of a sudden I got super excited because I love jewelry. It's something I understand and I love the messages they're touching. They're mushy. I'm kind of mushy that way. So it all came together and just extremely lucky to have a great business partner and a great team 
behind me um, that we hit um, essentially one winner for Valentine's Day, Mother's Day and Father's Day and definitely planning on knocking it out of the park in Q4. Yeah, amazing. Thanks for that. So, okay, here's how I think we're going to do the rest of this. I'm going to get us up here on the screen. So anybody has questions in the audience, drop them in the chat, and I'm going to kind of keep my eye on the chat, and I'm going to volley the questions up here, the panelists. But in addition to that, I've got some of my own. So I'm going to kind of keep the conversation flowing. As you guys have questions, drop them in the chat. We'll kind of go back and forth. As I mentioned before, never done one of these, so we're all in for a treat here. We're going to figure out how good of a host I really am in today's uh, episode. I'm going to be challenged a little bit. So here's something I want to, I kind of want to get to know you guys a little bit better myself. So real quick question. Um, everybody's done some big numbers. I remember what it was like when I was new and, and, you know, I'd see YouTube videos or interviews or these big posts. And I'd always wonder kind of what it was like uh, behind the curtains for a lot of these people. Um, so my question for you is, first of all, how many of you still have jobs? Does anybody still here still have a job, a full-time job? And so Anna, I, you were doing the stay-at-home mom thing for a while, right? Okay, so you've been kind of doing the part-time, you know, entrepreneurial type stuff for, for several years, right? Yeah, yep, that's right. So I still do the mom thing. My kids are only in school for five and a half hours a day. So that's like my time. And when they're gone, I'm like in my, I call this my, um, my closet office. <laughs> I, I live in Germany. And so we get this funky spaces and this is my office. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I grind it out in about five hours a day because that's all the time I've got. So I'm kind of more part time than I am full time. Yeah, that no, that's awesome. So in Luna, you've been running an agency. You've got kind of an agency thing on the side. Plus, you've got your own. I do. You know, e stuff. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. So, I mean, I would say like shine on, uh, obviously closer to the holidays, I'll put more hours, but, uh, like, yeah, right now I usually like have the V my V 18 kind of like handle it. And that's kind of the beauty of Etsy. Uh, once you have like, uh, a flow going and you're like constantly uploading new products, uh, it's, it's kind of passive to be honest. So that's the, that's the beauty of it. I felt like when I was doing Facebook, I had to be way more proactive and like uploading designs, especially closer to the holidays to find a winner. And Etsy, it just kind of like the algorithm does it for you, so. Yeah, that's awesome. And the margins are freaking amazing too, because the ad spend is so low. So, so Jesse, what about you, man? Um, have you, uh, do you still have a job? Did you do part-time? When did you make the switch? Tell us about it. I made the switch around last October, whenever I found my first winner. Um, I do help another client uh, with, you know, Facebook ads, Amazon, Etsy, Google. I, I kind of do everything. Um, so I don't really have my own advertising agency, but I do have clients. So that's, you know, between Shine On and that, that's what I do full time. So freelancer. I, yep, freelancer. Love so what were you it. doing like before October, before you hit your winner, what were you doing? So uh, I actually drove for Grubhub a little bit, delivering food um, while I was doing my drop shipping stores. Way to be, grind it yeah. out. Oh yeah, exactly, gotta, gotta work your own hours. But uh, other than that, I actually had an Etsy store right after I graduated high school, it did pretty well. And then Etsy suspended me, so I kinda had to start from scratch and I was like, well, I don't know what to do. So I just went and got a job at Grubhub. I was doing drop shipping stores, you know, I. I found a couple of winning stores, but it, it nothing like Shine On. Honestly, there are always issues with drop shipping, um, with inventory in China, shipping, product quality. I mean, it was an absolute nightmare to be quite honest. So I'm so glad that I found Shine On because yep. uh, you know I was able to drop that completely. Yeah, it sounds like a sales pitch, but you can scale without the worry at Shine yep. On. That's exactly. one of the coolest things about it. Tiffany, um, so what about you? What's what's kind of your story here? When was the last time you had kind of a full-time job uh, and weren't doing your own entrepreneurial thing? Probably about, I quit my full-time job, I would say seven, eight years ago. And I had a company um, um, just doing real estate and did that for several years and the market changed. So I hopped on the e-com train and was looking for the right business in within e-com. Um, my journey was I 
didn't know what really was in it. So I tried F FBA, Amazon FBA. I looked into drop shipping and then finally found PLD. And then, and, you know, even tunnel vision a little more, even within PLD, there are different products and different niches. So it was really trying to narrow down what products and which niches to focus on. And again, you know, found uh, Shinon and have not turned back from anything else. So I'm focused on this 100%. <laughs> and you're right, Luna, it's, um, I'm actually going to start on the Etsy side of things, because there is so much work on the Shopify store with ads. And, you know, there are days I'm doing 20, 20 hours a day, 18 hour days consecutively, it's so much work. And part of me being here is I want to learn how you and Anna can have the time and streamline your process that I can take away for my team. My <laughs> so I don't have to work so hard. Yeah, uh, that's I think awesome. all of us, Tiffany, to be honest, <laughs> we can all learn from each other. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's uh, that's awesome and hilarious. But I'll also tell you that, that Tiffany, your work is is paying dividends. And uh, honestly, part of the reason you probably hit winners the last three holidays the way you have is because of the the effort you're putting into it. You know, so props to you for that. Um, even though I get I get the desire for a break <laughs> on it too. Um, I, think I just got tomorrow off, so I'm so excited to finally get a full 24 hours off. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So here's another question I have. And again, this is the whole, look, you're all top sellers and there's kind of this weird aura that kind of comes with that. Um, but also I want people to realize that we're all just a bunch of human beings like everybody else. So Here's a question. What was kind of the the uh, biggest kind of obstacle you've had to face in this kind of digital marketing kind of journey? Right um, now, you can contextualize that however you want. You can talk about, you know, maybe it's a balance of, of, of you know, the work life balance, you know, because you're working from home. <clears throat> maybe it's the whole inconsistent paychecks kind of thing. Or maybe it's something else. Maybe it's something more deeply kind of personal about the whole thing. But just what if you think back over the last you know year, five years, whatever that time frame looks like for you, what's been kind of some of the biggest obstacles uh, or a big obstacle you've had to face just to make all of this work? So, uh, Luna, if you're ready, uh, hop. Yeah, sure. I mean, I have, I have so much to share. Uh, I think the biggest one is mindset. And if you watch like the Coffee with Michaels, I think it's recurring. It comes back over and over again. Um, I would say for really for a really long time and simply because I come, I used to work in advertising agencies, like doing digital marketing. So anything, I was very skeptical for a really long time um, until I actually ended up meeting friends in the industry who were like really successful selling online. So kind of like helped sort of like drop the skepticism. But what I see with newbies uh, who reach out to me, a lot of time is like, they don't believe that it's feasible. So that is really going to hurt you because if you don't believe something's feasible, you're not going to put the appropriate amount of work. Um, the second thing I would say is you really need to treat it like a business. And that's something that I've struggled with for a really long time. I was treating it as a hobby. And if you're treating it as a hobby, you're only going to get a uh, sub bar results. So it's um, going to pay you like a hobby too. Exactly. Exactly. So you really have to treat it like a business. And, you know, that might mean hiring people like and, you know, understanding that up front you might have a loss, but eventually, you know, it's going to compound into actual profits. So understanding that or, or if you don't have the ability to hire a VA, then understanding like, OK, I'm going to have to like get five to ten designs, you know, per week or even more and just make sure that you have a cadence and you're not giving up. So for me, I think that's. That's the biggest thing, like uh, mindset and treating it like a business. No, that's awesome. Uh, thanks for that. So, hey, are you guys, you, you're also in the order of Luna, Jesse, Anna, Tiffany, right? On your screens? Yeah. Okay. So that's the order we're going. We're just going to keep that order. So nobody drop and rejoin. You're going to confuse me big time if it scrambles this thing. So, hey, Jesse, uh, over to you, man. Biggest obstacle. I would say staying motivated. Um, you know, whenever you you find your first winner, it's it's great. You know, you got all that serotonin and dopamine 
flowing, but then, you know, once it starts dying down or, you know, your ad account gets disabled, it's very discouraging. Um, and it's difficult to, you know, keep wanting to create designs. Um, I, I would say that's my biggest obstacle is just staying motivated, continually testing new designs. Um, cause I mean, it's, it's, it's not an easy ride. That's for sure. It's up and down. It's like a roller coaster. Um, especially with Facebook ads. I mean, that, that's why I definitely want to get into Etsy and Amazon because it seems, you know, you just keep pumping out designs and, you know, they, Luna and Anna have it all figured out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that and the inconsistent paycheck, that, that can be very difficult, um, you know, especially if you don't have anything else. That, that's kind of why I got clients to manage their accounts as well so I could have something in addition to shine on just in case something were to happen with one of my ad accounts or a design died out, I still have other income that I can rely on where, you know, it, it's still fueling my passion for e-commerce. Yeah, that's awesome. And by the way, I actually kind of resonate too with what you said about there, there's something weird with Facebook. I don't know what it is, but it's like when you do hit a winner and you scale it big, you get this like massive reward, right? But then yeah. once the winner is kind of run out, you're just you're it's like you're just dropped from this incredible high to like right back in the grind. You know? Exactly. And yeah, you're it, starting from square one. Yeah, it's freaking it's really weird. And from a mindset perspective, it, it's kind of hard to adjust to. I actually think uh Ronnie, and I don't want to speak for Ronnie McKenzie, um, but I was seeing some posts that he was putting out the other day, and he said that too. He also started to feel kind of he struggled for motivation a little bit um after it, their big uh, Christmas run and they put out the course and all this stuff. So it's, it is a weird, uh, kind of grind. So I feel you on that. Um, Anna, yeah, what about you? Absolutely. Um, so that's a good question. Cause this is something that I've put a lot of work into this year. And that is also my mindset in previous years. I always felt like somebody else is way better than me. And if I could only just be in their mind, then I would win. But this year I made some very specific goals for myself. And I just kept telling myself like, this is my year. This is it. This is like, I have everything within me. And that's actually, I feel like was my biggest reason for success this year is because I finally believed in myself that I, I was my own winner and that I didn't need anybody else to tell me what to do anymore. And um, between that and just consistency showing up every day has made the biggest difference. So I really encourage people to see what their limiting beliefs are. Like, you know, what do you believe about yourself and are those holding you back? Because that can really change your success. If you only believe you can get $500 a month, I guarantee that's all you're going to get. So go crazy. Like think about as far as you can go, like, can you get $100,000 in six months? My goal was actually only $20,000 in May. I was like, I'm going to make $20,000. And I made way more than that. Like, it was so insane. So really, I encourage people to test their beliefs about what you think you're capable of and then show up for yourself every day because that's the key to success. So, okay, first of all, I freaking love that. So also, I want to say, you have this crazy goal of how many products this year are you trying to upload that? <laughs> I know, people were talking about that in my group. <laughs> so I told uh, somebody in my group that I am going to list 15,000 products this year. Like that's my big goal because <laughs> yes, Tiffany, woo. The reason why is because I want to shoot for something that is almost unimaginable because if I'm shooting for that, that far, that means I'm in the game for a long time. And if I don't figure out something in 15,000 designs, then I don't know what I'm doing here. But my feeling, my, my belief is that I will. I absolutely will find success in 15,000 listings, right? So I yeah. also just, I, I love that it, it uh, you have a realistic expectation of how much work it's going to take. Too. That's what I love about it. It's an unimaginable goal that's going to require an unimaginable amount of work to make happen. But what's crazy is even if you only get 1,500 listings up and not 15,000, you're still going to probably blow like your financial goals. You're still probably going to blow them out of the water, which is pretty incredible. I also love, uh, you know, I, I would prefer that people not set goals 
necessarily around like revenue numbers, right? Instead, set goals around things you can control. So you're yeah. setting a goal around the number of listings you want to get up because, you know, that should have a direct correlation with revenue, right? Yeah. What I recommend people do with Facebook is set goals around the number of tests you want mm -hmm. to run, right? Because the number of tests will have a direct correlation with revenue. I also love the mindset. Sorry, I just I really enjoyed this. I love the mindset stuff you hit on because um, you have this view that that you that you lacked nothing, right? That, that you weren't like wanting for something outside of you yes. to, to make this work. You were your own winner. And, and something I've said before is the only hindrance for people in this space is, is right between your ears. That's the <laughs> only hindrance. It's the only thing that holds you back from success in this business is everything that goes on between your two ears, right? Yes. Because it's never been easier before in the history of the world to make something like this work. And then finally, I also like that I've said this before, your life is your fault. And it's kind of cold and callous and I get all that. But there's still a lesson in there and you should kind of mine the gold out of it because your life kind of is your fault. You have agency, you have free will, you have the ability to affect your circumstances. And like you have to understand that if you want change, you have to do things differently, right? Yeah. You're, you're not going to get out of the, the your existing lifestyle by doing the same things that got you there. <laughs> right. So it's like yeah. you have to take ownership over your life and change things and command it to go a different direction. Anyway, yeah. I'll stop Absolutely. there. I love well, that. That was great. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, when I first found China on, I, I sure I watched coffees with Michael and I was like, oh, they're all about Facebook ads. And that really like scared me because I felt like I was like, I'm starting over. Like I know everything about Etsy and Amazon. Like, okay, I'm just going to you know, it was that belief in myself. And I had was so determined that this was going to be my year. I mean, there was just like nothing that was going to stop me. And um, with having that mindset, when I came across a problem that didn't fit, like there wasn't a, an easy solution, I was so committed to solving those problems and finding a way. I recently told people that you need to work around the pod company more than they need to work around you, right? Because there's always going to be a problem and it's up to you as the marketer and the business owner to make that solution great for your customers. And, um, and it's also for you to find a solution to get your products out there. There is always a way, but you have to decide that you're going to find that way and stick to that no matter what is happening. And I see that a lot with newbies as they go, Oh, there's something wrong. Oh, blah, blah, blah. but there are solutions that you can find. And um, if you have that mentality, it really will bring you the results that you're looking for. Yeah, I love that 100%. Thanks for sharing that, Anna. Tiffany, obstacle. Um, <laughs> sorry, Luna, Anna, I'm going to follow them. Mindset is one, time management priority is another. So um, very similarly, I didn't think I deserved to make a lot of money or make a lot of revenue. And it did occur to me one day that I wish for a lot of things, but wish for money is not one of that. And I think in the back of my upbringing and whatever thing that I was raised with, um, money is not this good thing. It's almost like a bad thing or not um, something to be promoted. So I had to get through that hurdle in my own head and really have that loss of attraction. I think once I got through that, you know, I, I am worth it. Uh, I do deserve it if I work hard enough, if I have the right circle around me. And Honestly, I think once I broke through that hurdle, I found the coaching group I wanted to be in. I found the right POD partner I wanted to be with. And I found essentially a whole platform of people. Um, so instead of me going out there to look for everything, almost like the universe came to me and put it on my plate. But that's all because I changed my mindset. Um, number two is time management. So I have aging parents that don't drive. And essentially, I'm their Uber driver, glorified Uber driver, a handyman, you know, a muscle guy, whatever it is. So everything they need, I am there to help them. So that's a lot of time out of my day, especially during work days. And it's sometimes difficult to manage between work and them, but this is part of the reason I got into this business so I can have the flexibility to help them whenever they need. So that's 
a huge motivation for me. But what it also makes um, makes life easier but harder at the same time is I need to prioritize what really make uh, moves the needle. What are the tasks I need to do to make this into a revenue generating task. Anything else that does not generate revenue, I can hire somebody else for that task. And you, I have to be very critical and very realistic to myself, uh, what I can do, what I cannot do. And, and then that's an evaluation, that's a choice that I'm making every day with my business partner, with my team, with myself. So if it's not a needle mover, let's push it off or do we need to do it? Um, so that's part of, I think, our success lately is we're able to push off the tasks and um, also, you know, even just cancel some of the tasks. And that's, again, part of the things I wanted to learn from this panel with Luna and Anna and Jesse. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. And also, like, you know, most of the people listening to this, they probably don't have teams, or they may not have VAs yet. And uh, kind of what you're talking about, you know, being able to prioritize tasks accordingly, like to see them for what they are and kind of determine if it's something that's going to be going to be able to move the needle or if it's going to be profit producing or not. And then choosing what to go after. It's a critical task if you want to succeed here, because there is an endless number of things to distract your attention away, especially in this business. I mean, you can literally spend all day trying to get your logo right. You could blow weeks trying to figure out how to how to get your logo right when it, it's not a needle mover, right? So I think that's uh, 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 super important. All right, so I'm going to try to jump to some of the questions in the chat here, and uh, we'll get through a few of these, so bear with me here. Um, first one here that kind of caught my eyes from Steve. Has anyone found a winner through Etsy? That when they that they went then went on to and scaled on Facebook. If so, what are the signs of a winner on Etsy? So I think that probably is going to go to Anna and Luna. Um, Anna, you haven't done any Facebook marketing though, really, have you? Uh, I have not. I'm actually learning right now in preparation for fourth quarter. But my big vision is to have a selling ecosystem. So you use like in my last interview, we talked about we start start with Shopify. And then we use Amazon and Etsy as kind of our place to find winners or potential winners. And then I move that up to Facebook. So while I can't say that I have perfect experience in that, that is the direction I'm going. Um, and I, from my experience and learning from others, that seems to be kind of the goal is to have that, that ecosystem of selling so that you hit all the areas where all the people are, where all your perfect buyers are going to be. So also, so like the second part of his question is, what are the signs of a winner on Etsy? So I think he, okay. I think he's asking from a research perspective. Not Actually, exactly. Yeah, I can answer that question because I've done both. Um, I have tried to scale winners on Etsy on Facebook. And I would have to tell you they're completely different beasts. Um, simply because the customer you're going after on Facebook and also the intent of purchase on Facebook is very different than the intent of purchase on Etsy. And once you understand that, you're going to see them separately. So, you know, when you're on Facebook, and that's the other thing you really have to be conscientious when you're creating products, right? Thinking of the psychology of the consumer. So when you're on Facebook, like people who are on Facebook are going to do kind of like an impulse purchase, right? So that impulse purchase, it has to be something that really that's so, so unique that they're going to want to purchase it right then and there. And like Michael's always says, you know, it really needs to have like a really deep emotional pool, um, which is why Facebook is way more aggressive as far as like how much products you need to put out there and test to see what's really going to resonate with a Facebook um, user, if you will. On Etsy, people already are ready to purchase a gift. So I think that, and it's really funny. I was actually, sorry, can I say bitching? But I was bitching to Carlos the other day because like um, customers on Facebook, I feel are so much nastier when it comes to like customer support than Etsy customers. Like Etsy customers are like angel compared to Facebook customers. Um, that's like a side note. But anyways, like Etsy customers, like they're looking for gifts and they're, I feel like, 
they're way more open-minded and also because they trust the Etsy platform. So there's more room to play. But then essentially like Anne has mentioned, you know, you're working against another stream, which is essentially like uploading as many permutation of, for, of your design as possible. So they're completely different uh, games. And yeah, like I've, I've tested Etsy winners on Facebook and it hasn't necessarily converted and vice versa, to be honest. So uh, I'm also going to answer this question a little bit because I found uh, my path has been a little bit in the middle of that. Um, I actually uh, didn't want to, especially when 2020 kind of popped off and we had the stuff going on in China. Um, I was looking for some new products to sell and I didn't want to drop ship from China. So I thought, hey, I'll see if I can drop ship from Facebook, uh, Etsy. So I went around on Etsy and I looked for products that I thought would do well on Facebook. And I reached out to individual makers and tried to check to see who had the capacity to scale. And I found um, a product in May um, that a seller had and I took it to Facebook and we did 5,000 units in like, I don't know, 20 days or something like that. Now I almost, they were, I almost destroyed them because <laughs> they were like three people in a garage kind of thing. <laughs> and they went from doing like five units a day to like 150, 160 units a day in like that time frame. So they were kind of, they were like in total panic mode and we had to stop after the month of May, but we got all 5,000 out and they were awesome. But anyway, my point is there is kind of a middle path here, but I do agree with what Luna said. When people are on Etsy, um, their buying intent is already raised, right? They're on Etsy because they've already decided they're going to buy something and they already have in mind what they want to buy. So they're using the, the search field to kind of pull up products that might kind of already fit their you know mental description of what they already want. And then they'll purchase, even though it's not kind of an impulse thing. Facebook's totally different. People are not in buying mode, right? You have to, you have to put a product in front of them that they have to have. Right. And so those do exist on Etsy, but they're going to be more difficult to find. That's my experience anyway. Uh, Jesse and Tiffany, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Um, yeah, I'll add something. So I, I do have an Etsy store and I just kind of upload every design that I make to it. Um, one of my winners that I scaled in Q4 last year on Facebook, uh, that is actually my top seller on Etsy. So it, it's, it's, it's interesting that it kind of correlates, but you know, it, it all comes down to buying intent. You know, I, I think that my winner is a very broad kind of evergreen audience. And I think that's why it does so well on both platforms. I think there may be some other designs that may not do well, you know, on Etsy and they'll do really well on Facebook or vice versa. So, yeah. Uh, just one last piece to add. Um, I We haven't gotten our Etsy store completely up yet, but from my research, the Etsy designs can be very simple, very elegant, where um, Facebook designs have to be a little more eye-catchy because, again, with the search uh, purchase intent, people don't want to buy. So when as they're scrolling through, there's, there's something in the ad, whether it's a video or picture, of your design of the of the jewelry you're selling that is catchy enough for them to stop scrolling and actually look at it, read it, or or watch it. So the design perspective is, um, for me, it's very different on um, to on the two different platforms. Cool, thanks for that. All right, uh, Facebook user, trusty Facebook user uh, for Etsy. Lots of Etsy questions here. Um, do you use other ways to drive traffic other than, for example, Etsy ads or hope the SEO is on your side? So I assume it's referring to Etsy SEO uh, in the question. So uh, Anna, Luna, we'll kick it off with you two. Uh, Luna, would you like to go first this time? Sure. Um, so I actually, um, okay. So first I focus on like uploading products. And then once I have a winner, oh, sorry. Like my phone's blowing up. Uh, once I have a winner, I will go ahead and um, upload rich pins on Pinterest. And I do it multiple times. Um, so that will bring me traffic. And then with Etsy ads, actually, I I did play with Etsy ads. Uh, you know, especially when there's a holiday, I play around with it. But I try to, I try to minimize the use of it. <clears throat> 
I like to use them like sort of like when there is a holiday and I want to kind of like get a sense of like which ads are doing or which design has like the most potential. And then usually I'll turn it off um, simply because once you have traction, Etsy's really good about bringing you traffic. So to be honest, like that's the beauty of Etsy. Like your focus should be uploading new designs and, and new uh, creatives like pretty frequently and really looking at keywords like SEO. So like there's a tool that I like to use it's called E-Rank. Um, and essentially like within that tool, like it gives you ideas of like keywords that you should leverage within Etsy where there's perhaps like less competition. So if you do that homework, then um, it makes it a lot easier. And um, and yeah, you don't really have to like focus as much on like bringing additional traffic unless you have a winner. So let me get that right. So you said that um, you make pin you like make Pinterest posts that link back to your Etsy listings, and that drives traffic. Is that what you were saying? One, yeah, but only for only for winning designs. So if I have a design that's doing really well, then I'll go out of my way and create like rich pins on Pinterest to bring traffic back. What so it does help it does help boost like it does help boost as far as uh, organic traffic back to the Etsy store. What what's a rich pin? Is it is that like oh it's video it, uh, video pins like because they perform way much better than um than standard pins for whatever. And so does, does that actually drive sales or do you just do it for the SEO lift? It does. It drives sales. Um, the thing with Pinterest is like the sales takes longer to come than Facebook because like people need to re-see the pin over and over again. But yeah, it really does. It helps. I would say it, boost, it boosts it by like 10%, which is good, you know? I was muted. I said, yeah, they're, they're, they're free too, right? So you just have to put in the work. Exactly. It's free. Uh-huh. Free money. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Anna, what do you think? Uh, yeah, so I agree a lot with Luna. I am trying some different strategies with Etsy ads because I believe, like I said before, there's a solution to all your problems. So I believe that there is a solution to get my ads to work for me. But that I, I had no ads going when I had my big Mother's Day run. So I really think that if you are just starting out, the biggest thing that you could do for yourself is to be consistent, have good keyword research, good SEO, and those two things will bring you the greatest success. And then creating those other things around to drive traffic is like next step. But that's not, you, you should focus on your flow, on your framework first. And making sure that you have consistency. Etsy really favors sellers who are in their store every day doing something. It doesn't have to be the whole world. It has to just be something every day. And that can bring a, a lot of success just from those two things. So just good keywords and consistency. Yeah, I love how systems focused you are too. It's just like every day, grind it out. You know, yep. every day, do the work. Um, and I just think like everybody... Move the needle. What's one thing you can do to move the needle? Yeah, you know, one thing. No, I just, I was going to add, I'm sorry to interject. Like, I think, to be honest, that's what most people struggle with. They don't see results, they get discouraged, and they don't continue. So exactly what Anna's saying, you have to, like, have a workflow uh, and give yourself, like, you know, 60 to 90 days, like, even like the way you did it, Michael, last year, right? For Q4, you were telling people like upload 100 designs, you know, test 100 design, like get yourself in that mindset of like, I'm going to upload or like Anna, you know, she's like, I'm going to upload 15,000 listings, like get yourself that goal and, and kind of like detach from revenue. And that's when everything's going to start clicking. I will tell you, I don't know. It's, look, I've talked to a number of top sellers now. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of people now in this space and all the people are doing big numbers. They have incredible work ethics to match. Nobody is out there. Like the whole, I say this all the time, but the whole, you know, sipping martinis at the pool, Lamborghini lifestyle, kicking back in the mansion kind of thing. Like that is a freaking mirage, right? Like these people are grinding it out every single day at a computer. I mean, every day, seven days a week. In a lot of cases, they're getting up early. They're staying up late. They're putting in 14, 16 hours a day, 
every single one of them, right? There's a system and a process they're following that's getting them their results. And that's not to say they don't take a vacation or enjoy life. I'm just saying like they have a work ethic that matches the results in literally every case that I've seen. It, it's not a lottery ticket. Um, so anyways, yeah, I agree with a lot of what you said. Jesse and Tiffany, uh, do you have anything you'd like to add here? So Jesse, I know you mentioned you had the Etsy store. I didn't know that. Um, and Tiffany as well. What, what do you guys think? Um, I, I don't have much to add. I feel like they kind of covered it all. My my knowledge of Etsy is very limited compared to what they know. <laughs> um, all, all I can say is whenever I had my first Etsy store, whenever I was 18, um, I, they, they didn't have Etsy ads back then. So I was just 100% SEO. And once you get on that first page, I mean, you're going to be getting organic sales for those keywords. And uh, I, I think Keyword research is super important. I mean, that's that's what you want to do. I think trying to just start out with ads is a not not the best way to approach it. I think the first step is just to uh, you know do some keyword research, figure out what people are searching, and make sure that your listings are optimized for that. Yeah, totally. Plus, Etsy ads are just so limited in what you can do anyway. You can't like exactly. hack the ads the way you can Facebook. Tiffany, yeah, no, do you have I mean, anything you'd like to add? Sorry, Jesse. Um, I don't have too much on the Etsy side, but I definitely realize the difference between running the Shopify store versus the Etsy side. So we're developing essentially two se separate systems of how to operate in one on one platform versus another platform. And that system, you know, like Luna and Jesse refer to the, the research and the uploading consistently daily from Anna. That's actually the system we're trying to implement as well, where I think on the Shopify side, Shopify side, we don't have to add um, new skills every day. A lot of it is relied on the ad. So it's an instant gratification, but it has, we also pay for a lot of the ad cost itself, where I think with Etsy, it's more consistent, more evergreen, and definitely cheaper. And also, it's, you know, again, a great place to test. And so it's really setting up different systems for different platforms. Yeah. And by the way, let, I'd like to just underscore, especially if you're new here, you don't necessarily have to choose one over the other. This can be a both and kind of game. Um, they both have their pros and their cons. Hey, Luna, quick question. Do you still, you mentioned uh, you may have a time constraint here. Do you still? Yeah, need to show? I have can, to jump off. Sorry. Can we, can we lob you one, one question just for you or do you need to? Yeah, skedaddle? sure. Sure. Okay, this one, Only. this one was just for you from Resty for Luna. What did you do for traffic, ads or just SEO? For my Etsy store? Yeah, I, I believe guess. so. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I mean, I think I already answered that. Essentially, what I do is that I upload designs, I see what the winners are, and then based on that, then I'll do like Pinterest. But um, when actually, when I first started in October, I did run Etsy ads, but the reason I did is because I came in and I already had like 300 listings because I had been testing really aggressively on Facebook. So I wanted to kind of like help things. Uh, and I, and I started with Etsy ads. I put like $20 a day and the sales started coming in. And then once the starts, the sales started coming in, I just turned it off because I, I, I mean, once you have a winner, like Etsy does all the work for you. So, um, I, I don't dislike Etsy ads, but you have to really like look at how much you're spending, just like Facebook, to make sure that you're in the green uh, because Etsy likes to spend and the dashboard is not as accurate. You don't have as much information when it comes to like CPM and CPC and all that as you would with, uh, with Facebook. So something to keep into consideration. Cool, well, thanks for that. And thanks for joining us today, Luna. Yeah. Appreciate it. I'm gonna have to have you on again. All right. Bye. Sounds good. Bye, guys. Bye. Sorry Take I have care. to go. See ya. Bye. Adios. All right. Let's keep going. We, we're getting a ton of questions here, and there so many of them are Etsy. Um, Etsy is just so popular right now. Anna. Uh, uh, I'm you, sorry. I'm, I'm going to advocate. I think it's the best. I really believe that it is low-hanging fruit, and you can get on so quickly and get going and get sales going. And people are there to buy, just like Luna was saying. I mean, it's like, it's not an impulse buy. People are going to well, buy. I mean, hey, you know, like Facebook has gotten more difficult, hands down. 
Um, especially with, first of all, Facebook has been like in the early stages of dementia for a while with like the way they're banning people and all this other stuff. Anyway, I mean, they've been a little bit off the reservation and now with iOS 14, right? It's there's weird attribution issues going on. Facebook also, they, they like to, uh, you know, they get the nerds together about once a month and they do some change on the algorithm and then all like every, all, everything is whack anyway for a little while. So my point is Facebook for a while has, has made things a little bit turbulent. So people are just naturally looking for other areas um, to find success in. And you showed up at like the perfect time, right? Because iOS 14 came out and a bunch of other things. And here you go, you, you blow it out of the water for Mother's Day. Um, you really put Etsy in the map, on the map uh, in a big way. So congratulations. And by the way, I'm gonna say something here. Um, I ran some reports uh, earlier this week, um, looking at all of the sales, shine on sales have been that have come in driven by Etsy, right? At least the ones we can track. And um, I can tell you that, first of all, it's not a small number, it's a very big number, but like 90% of those sales have come in in like the last four months of a very big number. So Etsy is growing. In a, it in absolutely a is. Way. I'm seeing more and more listings every, yeah, every day. So, yeah. So anyways, um, you're definitely onto something there. So if you're new, you're just starting out, you're, you're coming into this game, you're looking for, um, you know, a soft spot to kind of break through the wall, Etsy might be it. Yeah. So, And Etsy is just the beginning. Don't think we stop at Etsy, but Etsy is the lowest hanging fruit that you can get started on quickly. So you know, pick a plot. I tell people to pick a platform because if you try to do like Amazon, Etsy and Facebook at the same time, you're going to do none of them well. None of them will yeah. go well. There, so, there's actually a proverb that says it, uh, if you chase two hares, you get neither. Right. This is an old proverb. Yes. A hare is a rabbit for anybody yes. that doesn't know. Exactly. Um, so you can do all of them, but I recommend starting with one and getting really good at it. So yes. then it, it does make moving to other platforms a lot easier because they share so much in common. But yeah, doing all of them at once or trying to do even two at, one, at the same time is is not going to produce the results you'll get if you just focus on one platform. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I also, I want to reiterate for people, it's not an either or kind of thing. You don't have to choose one at the exclusion of everything else. Anna's just saying to start, pick one and master it and then move on to the next. Facebook is still working Super freaking well for a lot of people. I mean, still today, shine on, like I've got access to all the data. 95% of our sales are driven by Facebook ads, right? It's an incredible volume, okay? There are still tons of people buying on Facebook. There are still tons of top sellers putting lots of money into their bank accounts with Facebook ads. Facebook ads are still working in an incredible way. It's just that they've gotten a little bit uh, tougher over the last several months. I'd say the last six months in particular have been a little bit of, a, of an inflection point, but they're still working incredibly well. Tiffany is a great, uh, 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 I mean, great story of the case study of that maybe. Because um, Tiffany has used Facebook to scale the last three holidays. So um, it's still working incredibly well for some people. So uh, anyways, I'll keep going here. Let me see if I can find another question. Uh, here's one from Werner. Do you all do your own designs? Right. So, um, we'll start with Jesse and then we'll work our way around here. Jesse, do you do your own designs? Yeah. Yeah. For the most part. Um, if I see a design that I like and the graphic design group, I usually buy it and then I throw it up on Etsy or maybe test it out on Facebook. But I mean, all of my winners so far have been, um, designs that I've made myself. And they're, they're all very simple designs. I mean, it, it kind of blew me away whenever I, I tested my first design on Facebook. I was getting super complex. I had a bunch of flowers and stuff, and it just didn't work. And then so I was like, all right, let me simplify it, kind of dump it down a little bit. Um, and it, it worked really well. Yeah, that's awesome. And so you use the Shine On Graphic Design Group, you said. Yep. Yeah, yep. I, do, I do buy designs in there. Yeah, I'm going to plug it because it's an incredible resource. Um, that folks should know about. If you search in Facebook, you do shine on graphic design. We have an entire group. Of, how many freaking people are in that group? It's over a hundred thousand. I think. 
Yeah, or it's, it's a it's a huge number, whatever the number is. And there, I mean, you can just scroll through it. I mean, it's just it is full of designs, just shine on design. So if you need a designer, you're looking for a design, it's an incredible resource. Um, and you can just jump right in there. You can buy any design you see. You can ask for it to be an exclusive. So they'll take it down. They won't sell it to anybody else. Uh, it's a great, great resource. Tiffany, um, what about you? Do you do any of your own designs? I started um, last year, but very quickly I had to move on to designers. Um, you know, again, it was taking too much of my time. I rather focus on the messages. Um, and, you know, we learned the hard way for Mother's Day that the message at the end of the day is what sells, not the design. And we went about the wrong way and got a lot of really interesting designs that didn't work very well so now i'm more you know my partner and i were more focused on the message and we have designers working just on the design part and again very um very much exactly what jesse just said we also realized a lot of the complicated designs too flaw too flowery too much too many colors too many graphics in general doesn't work because people don't know what they're looking at, especially when they're scrolling through Facebook. It's hard to catch their eye with so much. They get overwhelmed and they just pass you by. So I use the KISS model, keep it, keep it simple. <laughs> um, and I, uh, I also work directly with our designers every day on their design reviews. And one thing I always do, I will actually cut out their designs when it's too you know, so those work again focused on movers. You kind of cut out there at the end, but I think we got the gist of it. Um, if you can, it, if your connection's good now, if you want to repeat like the last five seconds of what you said, I think we'll be caught up. Oh, um, just saying that I don't, I work directly every day with our designers, but I don't do the actual design. However, if I have an idea or I have, um, during the review process, I could give color suggestions, background suggestions, font suggestions. So those are the things I definitely do, but I don't, I don't design them myself. Again, yeah, so it sounds I like you have a whole workflow kind of set up with your yeah. designers. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Anna, what about you? Uh, in 15,000 listings, come on, you got to be using a VA or something. There's some secret sauce in here. Well, you have to remember that you put your message card on like, what, five or six products? You don't have your kids like slaving away on laptops all day, do you? <laughs> no, I keep telling my daughter. Well, yeah, the they're at daycare. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, yeah. Cool or whatever. <laughs> no, my eight year old, she has sold a message card before. And so that's why I tell anybody that if my eight year old can sell one card, then you certainly can also sell a message card. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, but I started out by doing my own designs because you can use Canva, which makes anybody who is not a, not a designer feel like a professional designer. And it's so easy to make. And there's really, in my opinion, three ways that you can stick out um, with your design and make it your own and also keep it really simple. And that's through your title, like the words that you use in your title, your messaging, and then, of course, your design, which can be really, really simple. Um, and if you, if you can nail those three things and it's really not that hard to do it yourself. So I am in the process of, I do have some people, I actually have a writer that I have hired who is awesome. And I do have a design company that I'm starting to work with and we're, we're starting to get a flow. So those things have happened, but I didn't start that way because um, I just, I didn't, I, but I, I taught myself uh, Canva makes things really easy and that's everything that I had done um, or when I had done my big run on Mother's Day, that was just from me. So anybody can do it. There, There's no like you don't need a big system. You need to have a system for you first. And then when you have consistency every day, that's when you start to go, OK, what can I do? You know, and consistency doesn't have to be like 20 products a day or a thousand products a day. It could be a couple sales a day. And then you say, OK, I'm going to replace myself with this person or this person, but everybody can start out with Canva and make designs and stand out and with just those three simple things and uh, have success. 
Yeah, I mean, I will tell you, I'm I'm no graphic designer, and uh, my several first winning products were all things that I made. Um, Jesse, it sounds like he's kind of the same way. Tiffany, when you first started out, were you, did you jump straight to using designers, or you had mentioned that you kind of did them yourself for a little while? What was your first uh, big winner? Was it one you um, did, or somebody else did? Actually, I I first sewed when the giraffe necklace came out and i made my own design found my own quote and tweaked it and um, did my own design in canva and in fact i still use canva this till this day sometimes when i have an idea and i just want to throw it out there really quick i use canva to design it and then throw it out um to our va to upload it and other times i would even use uh canva as a concept um as a concept to draw it out for our designers so they know what I'm looking oh, for yeah, and execute it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. So I'm definitely question. not a Photoshop person, so Canva is my life right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, I'm more of a Photoshop person myself, but um, so what, uh, there's a lot of questions here in the chat and I'm kind of, I apologize everybody, I'm kind of losing track of these a little bit. So if you have a real burning question, maybe ask it again if I've missed over it. Uh, so somebody asked a question, and again, I've lost it in the chat, about um, the types of phrases that are selling well. Um, funny phrases, sentimental phrases, that kind of thing. Uh, I've got my own thoughts on it, but we're, we'll do a quick uh, round table here. Anna, let's go to you first. Funny, sentimental, what's working for you? So I believe that any of those can work. You can go the funny way, you can go the sentimental way. Uh, the reason for me switching to Shine On was actually because I am not a funny person. I tell my husband, he, well, he asked me like, why do you never laugh out loud? And I say, I do, I laugh inside because I just, I can't, I don't know, it's something about just laughing, it's so hard for me. And so um, I went the sentimental route because that had more meaning for me and more connection. That was Im important to me. Some people, it, it may not matter to you, um, but I went with kind of my natural talent. And so it made it so much easier. I tried to do the funny t-shirt thing for years and, you know, I had success, but it just was like, I always felt like I was just like stretching to find stuff. But the sentimental stuff comes so easily to me because I have so many rich relationships in my life. So I, I say you go with what, excites you and what you feel like you want to hold on to because if you're not excited about it like I wasn't excited about funny or like um funny or you know witty or like poking fun at people that's just not my personality uh so it really made it harder to do it but I get the sweetest messages from people and um some of them have like have brought me to tears because these these products really mean something to people and they're tokens of love. They're they're so for me, it's really exciting to use sentimental because I'm using words to love on people. And I really wanted to find a product like that where I could love people and put goodness out into the world. But some people love to laugh and some people want to share laughter. So if that's your gift and that's something that excites you and you can hold on to long term, then go that way. I believe that either way can work. It's just what works for you and what what motivates you. Yeah, I totally agree with all of that. Jesse, what about you? Sentimental, funny, what what do you see working the best? So I, I, I think anything can work, like Anna said. Um, don't don't limit yourself and just test everything. But for me, what has worked the best is sentimental. Um, you know, kind kind of like Anna, you know, I, I feel like uh I have really strong relationships in my life. So I, I've been able to, you know, kind of channel that in my designs. And whenever I'm choosing quotes, those really resonate with me. Um, and I feel like those quotes, whenever I'm picking quotes, I try and choose some that can speak to everyone. You know, it's not just a very specific niche. Like it, I only have said it yet, but my, my winners have all been kind of evergreen. Um, and I think that that kind of ties into it. So I, I, I like the sentimental route. Yeah, way to be, buddy. Um, good answer. Tiffany, what about you? Um, I agree with both Jesse and Anna. Our first, our two semi-Valentine's Day winners were actually both funny and a little bit sentimental. Um, so it's a combination. And Mother's Day and Father's Day are both sentimental. So I think 
at the end of the day, also, we're looking at who we're targeting. You know, if it's Father's Day, it could be sentimental, but it, you know, it could be also funny depending on the specific niche and specific audience that you're targeting. Usually moms would probably be more sentimental. Daughters are more sentimental, but fathers and sons, you know, in like, say, the fishing or uh, golfing niche that could be funny. I know Ronnie when they hit their winner, it was a total humor based winner that they're still going for. So I think it's niche specific, audience specific, and you just have to know who you're targeting before you uh, dedicate yourself into that. So a lot of research before you start writing the or composing the messages. And at the end of the day too, I agree with Jesse and Anna, um, because you're going to be reading so many of these messages at some point, you just stop feeling them because you get overwhelmed. So whatever speaks to you, because you have to be the one reading a thousand messages, you know, in a day or two or more. So what really speaks to you that is in your true character that will eventually come out, that sincerity and emotion will come out. Yeah, I think, I think you know, my thoughts on it are, are very similar. It, it seems to me that the sentimental stuff more consistently hits, right? Um, and if you look at companies like a Hallmark, for example, I mean, they built entire businesses around these sappy, sentimental um, messages and they work year after year after year after year. Um, however, there are like gift stores like a Spencer's Gifts. I don't know if uh, I don't even know if they're still in business um, or like, you know, the whoopee cushion. I mean, it sells for a reason. Yeah, it's like a perennial seller. You know what I mean? Um, so there is like a humor that you can slap people in the face with occasionally that will kind of take off. What's interesting is my um, I had one that was uh, kind of taken off for me last Q4 and it happened to be this weird um, kind of blend of, of sentimental and humor. So it was one of those things. It was kind of a bait and switch. It was baity with like sentimental and then it, it switched in the humor, like right at the end. So, um, and it was kind of working for me and it was the first time I'd ever seen humor work with the jewelry. Right. Um, this was before uh, Ronnie, and, and those guys uh, really kicked it off uh, in a big way. So I actually agree. I think at this point, I've seen everything work. Um, everything you can imagine. Things I never would have thought work, I've seen yeah. work. Um, uh, so you I really shouldn't limit yourself at all. If it moves you in any kind of way, uh, funny, if it makes you angry, if it makes you laugh, if it makes you cry, anything like that, you should try it. All right, so next question. Uh, and then we will we'll move towards wrapping this up. So here's one. Um, if you had any aha moments along the way, like what were some things that you kind of learned kind of in your your journey here? that just were real light bulb uh, moments for you. Like, I, I don't know, lights came on, something changed. Um, and maybe there was an epiphany, something like that, where you just kind of you leveled up. Right. Um, and we'll kick this one to. Let's do Anna first, if you're ready for it. Aha moment. A light bulb moment. Um, okay, I have, I have two. My first one is more recently. Um, I actually had somebody, this goes back to mindset. I had somebody who told me, yeah, you can make a million dollars. Why not? And I was like, what? Oh. It was like the first time that that just occurred to me that like, who who cares what like I thought was good money? Like, just go for it. Like, you can do it. And I was, I just I never had permission like that, I guess, or I felt like I needed permission or whatever it was. But I, I want people to feel like, um, I want to give you permission to have success and that everybody is capable of doing this. And that was just an aha moment that I didn't, I had a lot of limiting beliefs and I still am working through so many of those, but, um, that was a big aha moment of just being like, wow, there's so much that I can do. And I, I do want to push, push myself to see how far I can really go. Um, because that excites me, of course. Um, and then the the second, a big aha moment that I had, this was a couple years ago, which also contributed to my own um, 
to success this last Mother's Day was when you're working in marketplaces, especially POD, where people can use your, you know, the exact same product because we're all selling it and then essentially copy your design is to be your own copycat. So, and this, from what I've learned, is the same thing in Facebook. And uh, like Michael said, you have to race to the to the top to scale to try and push out your competition. We have to do the same thing in pod. So if you have something good going for you, replicate those designs, be your own copycat and uh, fill in that space and take that pie, you, the piece of the pie. You don't want to share it with anybody. So you've got to, to grow around what is working for you. So if you have a design or something that you're kind of like you put your hooks in and you're getting some nibbles on it, make some more of that, test that out. And you use the same principles on Facebook and Etsy and Amazon to get those sales. So uh, don't be afraid if, if you have something going to, to expand on that and see what else you can do with that. So that's my two, two aha moments. Yeah, I like it. Um, Tiffany, uh, aha moment. I can on the spot think of one, which is the going back to the KISS model. Um, again, we had so many different, spent so much time, money and resources creating designs that we thought was going to knock out of the park and none of them did. And then at the end, when we had the winner for Mother's Day and even Father's Day were designs that were so simple and designs that essentially were text based. Um, there's not much going on, but it just focused on the message. And honestly, it's something I can create in 10 minutes in Canva. And I don't have any design background. I don't have Photoshop background. Um, so it's all about keeping it simple. Um, you know, e even like that basic white background, black text model still works. Um, so don't go, don't go kill yourself making all these elaborate designs and fail over and over again. Just keep testing on the message and leave the design as simple as possible. And you don't have to work so hard. <laughs> yeah, no, I dig that. Um, Jesse, what about you, man? Aha moment. So I was actually going to say the same thing. Simplicity. Um, I, I've got two, but um, yeah, the first one is definitely simplicity. I was kind of blown away. Honestly, whenever I was making the design in Photoshop, I was like, there's no way this is going to work, but I'm, I'm going to try it out anyways. And, you know, within a week, I was like, oh my goodness, I, I actually kind of struck gold here. Um, so that, that was a huge aha moment for me. And I, I think it just comes down to being able to, uh, appeal to a wide audience. Whenever you start adding all these crazy colors, not everyone's going to like those colors. Not everyone's going to like those, you know, the flowers or the floral designs. Um, so just doing something simple, like Tiffany said, you know, white background, black text. I mean, that, that still works. Um, my, my second aha moment was, you know, not putting so much weight on making a certain revenue number and kind of setting realistic goals. I, I think that helped me a lot in my journey. Because I, I used to be like, oh, you know, I, I need to make a million dollars this year. I need to do this. I need to do that. And hit this certain number. Um, but which, whenever I was starting Shine On, I was just like, you know what? Let's see how it goes. I'm going to put up, put all my work in these designs and see if, you know, anything comes of it. And not worry about the revenue. Just kind of work on making sales. And that, you know, it ended up working out for me. I made more money than I ever have in the first three months on Shine On. So... Yeah, that's awesome, dude. I love it. You know, for me, I think it was, um, I met a bunch of my heroes. Um, and it happened over a course of several years. I just had a bunch of these people that I kind of idolized that were real successful, um, not necessarily in the e-com space, though that too, but in other spaces that I kind of pursue as well. And I had this incredible opportunity of meeting a handful of these individuals and getting to know them not just like bumping into them at a conference, but where we were texting each other and stuff like that. And I real, I finally like realized over time, I'm like, there is nothing special about these people. Like, I, I mean, I know some people, if I drop some names, you, you might know who they are. Um, and I realized I'm like, there's nothing special about these people like at all. Like they get frustrated, they cuss, you know, they like, they, they like, uh, there are days they just have to take off. You know, I, I just, they, they like to uh, watch entertainment occasionally. Like I just, I realized how human they were, but what set them apart was like, I had this mindset shift where I was like, 
I kept going to them to learn, right? I kept going to them to consume. I kept going to them and like, in a way I'm like, I'm like getting all my lessons from the things that they learned. And what I started to realize as, as I was like, what I need to actually absorb is the mindset that they have. We're like, they're already at the top of their game. They're not learning from other people. They're figuring it out, you know? And like, what kind of shifted for me was like, okay, that's where I've got to get to. I got to get into this place where I'm just figuring out the game, where I'm not going anywhere else to consume. I'm running my own tests, right? I'm, I'm using my own systems to kind of break through the wall, so to speak. When that kind of shifted for me, a lot of things changed um, in my life. And I also, I just, uh, there, there was something too about uh, meeting uh, my heroes and just, I don't know, there was something about like, it normalized success in like a weird way. It just made it feel so much more attainable, not like it was this out there kind of goal. So anyway, that for me was a huge uh, paradigm shift in my journey. So here, let's uh, let's wrap it up with this. I feel like this has been a real fun conversation. Um, where, what are your goals? So look, we're in the middle of the year. Um, most the 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 holidays now until Q4 are behind us. What you know, everybody I know that gets to summertime, they're sh- now they're just they're laser focused on blowing it out of the water come Q4. So let's talk a little bit about kind of your goals, your plan of attack for Q4. This time we'll go the other way around. Um, Jesse, let's go to you first. What's your what are your goals for Q4? What's your plan of attack to kind of in this year big? So my, my plan of attack is to test as many designs as I possibly can on Facebook. Um, you know, with Facebook, that's the only way that you can win is keep testing until you find something, scale it, and then start over. It's, it's very much a process. It can be kind of painful sometimes, but it, it's worth it. It's worth it. Um, I also really want to get on Amazon and Etsy. Uh, well, I'm already on Etsy, but add more designs to Etsy and really get Amazon started because I... I started my Amazon actually uh, about a week ago and I already got a couple sales and I'm not running any advertising or anything. Some of the listings I'm not even winning the buy box on. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think that my, my main goal is just to diversify and not put all of my eggs into the Facebook basket because anytime that I've put all of my eggs into one basket, that basket usually implodes on me. So, you know, I, I got to start diversifying a little bit. Yeah, that's a lesson to learn early in your digital e-commerce entrepreneurial neural journey. Hey, yep. this Amazon buy box thing for anybody that's aware of it, that is a freaking crime. I don't understand how they get away with that, man. Like, seriously, it, the it, FBI should be like kicking down Bezos' door at night and taking him to prison for like, I don't know what crime it would be, but it's, it's theft at some level. It's insane. I agree. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous because, I mean, you, you can be the only seller on a listing and still not be winning your own buy box. Yeah, it's and like- it, it, it's ridiculous. And the only way that you can advertise on Amazon is if you're winning the buy box. So it's like, don't you guys want my money? I, I don't know. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, like, I don't know how to describe it to people. I'm going to use a horrible analogy, but try. Imagine walking into a Walmart and finding a product that you really like. And then when you walk to the cash register, there's like a Target employee in a mask with their cash register out and you buy the Walmart product, but you give the target person money. That's like, that's like exactly what is going on with the buy box. It's criminal. Yeah. I'm telling you. It truly is. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, don't let that scare you away from Amazon and, though. Oh, I think you're scared over there, they just, they're a bunch of crooks. Uh, yeah, what was yeah. that, Anna? I think, I, think, I think you're scaring people. Guys, Amazon's amazing. Don't listen to these guys. Okay, this is like a small little thing and it makes it sound like the world's coming to an end, but it's not. You want to be on Amazon. Amazon is amazing. So you guys just. (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, there's some listings where I'm not even winning the buy box and I'm still getting sales on them. You know, it'd be be great if I could advertise those listings and I get more sales, but that that's, you know, different story. I'm just happy to be making sales. (laughs) I have a gift for hyperbole. So Anna is right. She's made way more money than I have on Amazon. So listen to her. Listen to her. 
I'm just saying when I first saw what was going on with the buy box, I about fell out of my chair. That's all I'm saying. I know, I know. But (laughs) Amazon's awesome, guys. Don't be afraid of Amazon. You want to be there. That's where the people are at. (laughs) Yeah. um, And by the way, I I know many people that aren't in the e-com space. Like I know a bunch of like authors and stuff like that, that their full-time income comes from from Amazon. So it it definitely works. So don't don't let me scare you away um, here. So Tiffany, uh, what about for you? What's your plan of attack for Q4? How are you wanting to kind of end this year and make it as big as possible? Um, Definitely starting with not just hitting the holidays, but really having evergreen uh, sales and consistent sales. It it's I literally feel like I'm going to have a heart attack with each peak and each valley that goes by. And I think I got 10 more great hairs since then. So definitely built out our general store. We're also building out a niche store and then getting on Etsy for, you know, evergreen sales. So really those three, essentially two platforms, three stores and evergreen, evergreen, evergreen. Um, We like to definitely use the evergreen cape to give us consistent sales, but also um, be able to ride on the holiday wave so we can do both sides and and you know win on both sides like you said earlier it's not either or it's both yeah you know i think that um so something that many people don't think about is like when christmas rolls around it, it, it's a compulsory gift giving holiday right everybody gives gifts around christmas or else you're like a horrible person so everybody will give gifts around christmas and they go to known marketplaces. Most people go to known marketplaces to make the majority of their purchases, right? They're not waiting for the perfect gift to hit them in the newsfeed on Facebook. Some people do that, but most people are not. They're going to known marketplaces, Amazon, Etsy, a retail store, something like that to buy their gifts. Now is the time to be flooding Amazon with uh, high quality listings and, and high quality designs to get prepared for Q4 because the amount of traffic these known platforms have is incredible. It it is absolutely insane. So now is the time to really be planning for that. So um, it sounds like a good plan to me, Tiffany. Someone, I just got to throw this out real quick. Werner says it's exactly six months to Christmas today. So get on it. If that was ever a a siren call for for urgency, um, get on it. Uh, You should probably sacrifice some sleep. To, to make the most out of this Q4. Anna, uh, what about you? What do you, what do you, what is your system? What's your plan of attack to make the most out of this year? So that is a good question. My plan of attack is to perfect my system, my, uh, my flow framework. I want to, the, like we've talked about before, it's all about mindset and having a plan in place. When I first started pod and e-commerce really in general, I was always, trying to like reach for, you know, the YouTube videos and the, the Facebook groups and this and that, and trying to just, I just try this idea. And then I forget about another idea that I was, you know, testing out. And so uh, what I find was that that doesn't bring success. That just brings a lot of crazy ideas all over the place. So m- what I'm doing is I'm working on perfecting my system so that I am getting um, actionable work done every day. So I'm, I'm trying to have the tasks in place that are moving my needle every day so that when Q4 comes, I'm prepared. I've, I've done something every day that has moved me to that point. So when Q4 comes, it's like going. And guys, you don't want to miss out. And Q4, especially with Etsy and Amazon, you want to be growing into the algorithm right now. Okay. It's not like Facebook where you can throw it in front of them today. You have to start now. So when you get your early Christmas buyers, which actually does kind of start now, then you're going to have time to grow into that algorithm with uh, naturally or organically, of course, and then ads as well. So, um, yeah, so now is the time to put your system into place so that you know that you're having something every day coming out um, and building yourself in those algorithms and finding your winning products that are going to uh, bring you success in fourth quarter. Yeah, I'll back you up 100% on that. People underestimate truly how big the market is. It is unfathomably it's it's incredibly until, huge. You just Until you go to through a Q4, you like even if you did everything that you could when you get to Q4 and you start seeing those sales come in, you're like, 
I wish I would have never slept. Like you can get so, <laughs> you're laughing, but it's true. Everybody feels that way. Nobody feels truly prepared because it's such a behemoth. And some people will even say they get 70% of their sales during for the whole annual year during Q4. So the, the, you, you can't underestimate the work you're doing today. Today will affect five months from now. The first winning product I had, and I'm stretching back to like 2017, um, I remember I left the the notification, my Shopify notifications on on my phone. So my phone would vibrate and light up every time I got a sale. And I remember sitting there in disbelief that like my phone was buzzing like every two minutes. I, and I'm just like, who are these people? Like, how are there so many people that just want to buy this thing? Like, it's hard to believe, but like it, you just, you cannot properly estimate the size of the market in Q4, it is unbelievably huge. Like I promise you, all of us are thinking too small about what is actually possible for Q4. Even your 15,000 listings thing, I mean, in reality, like it's, people literally could make hundreds of millions in Q4. I mean, it's, it's unbelievably massive if you're positioned right for it. So that's awesome. Well, I'm pretty pumped now, actually. I'm thinking about Q4 already. <laughs> Yeah, it's exciting. So get your systems in place. <laughs> yeah. And so I, th I think one big takeaway I want everybody that's listening. And by the way, go ahead and drop some love in the chat here for Luna, Tiffany, Jesse, Jesse Anna. Thank you so much uh, for joining me today. Uh, this has been a really fun one. I'd like to do these again in the future. Um, and let me know also, everybody, kind of what you thought of the panel versus the, the kind of solo interviews versus the me teaching thing. I'd like to know your thoughts on that. Um, so real quick, though, big takeaway for everybody in the audience, uh, remain, take action every day, be prepared to get in there, grind it out, dream really, really big, right? Because the market is much larger than you can possibly imagine. And when you're setting your goals, don't set your goals necessarily around revenue figures or financial goals. It's okay to have those, but set your goals around action, like tie it to some, something actionable, like Anna's going to do 15,000 listings. Jesse's going to do a certain number of tests. Tiffany's wanting to expand into Etsy and get those evergreen sales. And I'm sure she's got goals around testing as well. So you need like really tie your goals to something actionable, something that you can get up and do every single day. That's super important if you want to see success here. So, all right, we've got all kinds of stuff coming in. Thanks for this. Really motivational. Love the format. I love how you keep it different. Keep it real. Love, love, love. We got uh, that fun emoji there. So yeah, I think everybody had a fantastic, um, really enjoyed this one. So thank you so much for coming on, everybody. Really appreciate you. Thank you, everybody, for staying tuned. Uh, best part of the week, every week, guaranteed. All right, everybody. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Hey, hey, Michael here again. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you like the content, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And there's one more thing I want you to do. Check out the links in the description below. I want you to look at the link to shineon.com where you can sign up and become a seller with us today. It literally takes 60 seconds and it could change your life. Secondly, I want you to go to our Facebook group. It's the most engaged e-commerce group on the planet. We're constantly sharing important tips, tricks, and things like that that can help you on your seller journey and level up your e-commerce game. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you have a great one. Take care.